All right, it's playoff time, divisional round, my favorite weekend of the year. It will be here in Kansas City, Saturday, Jaguars at Chiefs. I'm excited, Trevor Lawrence, Patrick Mahomes. Come on, you can't ask for anything better than that. Now, the first matchup, Chiefs won this football game, 27-17. Did some good things on offense, did some good things on defense. Jacksonville certainly better than they were then. Kansas City's better than they were then, too. And here's one thing that jumped out to me watching back the film a little bit, and this is where I want to go inside the numbers powered by AWS. Jags need to spread out tight formations because these tight formations play into Steve Spagnuolo, Chiefs defensive coordinator's hands, in my opinion. Something they got to remedy a little bit this with, with this matchup the second time around. And you see here, average formation width, 2021, Things were a little more spread out, right? 27.5 yards within the, the in the uh, formation. 2022, things are more condensed, and that is something that shows a lot. There's a lot of positive things about having condensed formations, but some weeks, some matchups, it can play against you. And you see here, here we got a tight end, we got a bunch set up here with the three receivers, we got Hasty set off uh, on the side of Trevor Lawrence, and within this, and my big point here is that within these tight formations, it sometimes makes it very easy to teams to disguise and disguise blitzes uh, specifically, and that's where Spagnola is very, very creative and how he approaches that. And he's always got a few wrinkles to stress your pass protection. He's great at disguises. And one thing that they're great at doing is, like you see a safety down here, they'll do, hey, this guy drops into, they play Tampa 2. It looks like it was going to be blitz. And this guy's here and somebody's down the middle. And this guy comes off the line of scrimmage and hovers and reads eyes here to where you go, oh, it's Tampa 2. But at the same time, they can bring blitz that can give you issues as well. And that's what they're going to do here. You're going to see that. We've got a little route out here by Evan Ingram. And then up here on the front side, they're going to get a shallow crosser, somebody in the flat, and then a curl route. And the curl route's going to be open. But because of the disguise and the formation itself, they, Trevor Lawrence, the offensive line, they don't recognize the blitz in time. And they do a pretty good job of disguising. And at the snap, okay, it unlocks this guy. They take a little bit of a calculated risk in going, hey, we might leave some areas open, but we think we can get to the quarterback and get a sack and get a negative play. And we think that risk is worth the reward. And that's what I'm going to show you on this next clip. You see here, we got the safety who came down. It unlocked the guy at the end of the line of scrimmage. He's blitzing. They had Bolden up here, right, in the prior, the prior picture. He's dropped back, which kept the center there and the guard here, and now the tackle can't get out in time to get the extra blitzer. They got Saunders dropping into coverage, right? Here's another guy off the edge in William Gay. So they have do a great job of stressing protections, disguising things, and then, therefore, the quarterback's a little flustered in what he's going to see and getting the protection the right way. And that's where I talk about these tight formations where I'd like to see guys a little more spread out over here and like this because it makes the defense show itself a little bit. It gives you room. When they want to blitz, you start to go, oh, wait, I see that guy kind of inkling, uh, inching over towards the, the blitz position there that way. And with these tight formations, you lose that aspect as far as the quarterback being able to read it out, maybe check audible the protection, get to a new play or whatever, and I'll show you this last play and this next clip and how it all ended up. As you can see, Legereus Sneed off the edge, right, got there. Because of the condensed formation, it was a good disguise. The way they lined up, it put stress on the offensive line. Again, I think this is one of those things, if it was more of a spread out formation, they'd be able to diagnose this problem a little bit more. Uh, safety's playing in the middle of the field. They got a guy down here. See, within the condensed formation, too, you got guys who drop out of there, and they can kind of play areas. Now, the curl route's open here. There's no doubt about that. I get it. But they took this risk and this gamble, hoping that, hey, we'll get one guy free to where you're not going to be able to throw that curl route, and that's exactly what happened here. They get the sack. Trevor tries to think about throwing to Evan Ingram here, but it's not there. It's not worth it. He's got people all over him and that's just something to watch out for in this game again I think if the Chiefs if the, the Chiefs defense which is great at blitzing and creative if the Jaguars get in too many of these formations that are condensed and bunched together like that I think that's only going to play into the 
Chiefs defense's hand as far as being able to disguise and send up creative blitzes and zone blitzes and doing all that. So something to watch out for Saturday. Jags at Chiefs. I'll be there on the field. I hope you're watching on TV. Peace. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Farid, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Peace out.